Hi, I'm Rick Jones, known as the captain of Fishbait Marketing. I'm also a managing partner at the Fan Consultancy Agency Engagement. I recently produced a six-part video series on how to build and use a corporate sponsorship sales system. And you can find that seminar series up on YouTube for free. In that series, we very briefly discussed the five unique generations that are in the marketplace today. We only had a limited time to talk about those generations, so we've now decided to produce a whole new five-part series on these generations in the marketplace. What makes them unique and what makes each of them tick? So what are those five generations? The five generations in the marketplace today are as follows. Number one, the mature generation. These are those that were born before 1946 and are now ages 74 and older. The second generation are the baby boomers. That's my generation. And they were born between 1946 and 1964. And they are now ages 55 to 75. The third generation is Generation X. It is the smallest in population, and they were born between 1965 and 1976 and are now ages 43 to 54. The fourth one is by far the largest generation in the marketplace, and these are the millennials. These were born between 1977 and 1991, and they are now ages 28 to 42. And the final group are Generation Z. These were born between 1992 and the present day today. So they're ages 27 or younger. Our series will focus on one of these per episode. Of course, each and all generations are very difficult and cannot be pigeonholed because there are numerous uh, nuances and exceptions to every generation, but there are enough similarities to provide some insights. So today in episode one, we're going to start with our aging population, the mature generation. Now, every generation has a theme or a defining idea. This group's theme or defining idea is duty. And their tagline is, we earned it. They grew up as children of the greatest generation. And this group spent their youth, in most cases, during both the Great Depression and the Second World War. And they survived both to rebuild America during the heyday of the 1950s and 1960s. This is a group that grew up listening to the radio, and so they have great listening skills. They were also the first generation to watch television in record numbers. TV was the predominant marketing vehicle for them because there were only three national networks reaching unprecedented sized audiences. Now, every generation has a defining TV program and theirs was a famous TV soap opera called Peyton Place. And that soap opera was very scandalized for the times. Their music was exemplified by a guy named Frank Sinatra who reinvented himself many, many times. This generation both believed in and lived the American dream, especially for white men but it was also a generation that lived and benefited from both the women's liberation movement and the civil rights movement. This generation belonged to a lot of institutions. They belonged to churches and civic clubs and country clubs. And today, even a great many of them have moved to, moved to retirement communities or nursing homes. But unfortunately, this group has been the largest victims of the coronavirus with a disproportionate number of fatalities. In many cases, it's because they live in close proximity to other people. This generation responded to product endorsements from celebrities and public officials. Um, prior to 1975, there was no such thing as light beer. Beer was full body beer. And the Miller Brewing Company decided if they made lighter beer, people might drink more of it and they could increase their volume. So in 1960, uh, 1975, they created a product known as Miller Lite, L-I-T-E. Uh, now, a lot of people were gonna perceive this beer as weenie beer or sissy beer or watered down beer. So what did they do to counteract that? 
they went out and got a group of ex-jocks, ex-athletes that were the Miller Lite all-stars and appeared in a whole bunch of famous commercials um, where they debated whether it was taste great or less filling. And there were some wonderful ads of that era. One of my favorites was uh, the great defensive end Bubba Smith in the NFL and the great linebacker Dick Butkus appeared in a series of ads. And one of them, they were dressed in tuxedos. And they had been to the ballet the night, or they'd been to the opera the night before, and they were now going to the ballet. And uh, Buckus said, tonight we're going to the ballet. And Dick, and uh, Bubba Smith said, I sure hope they do that one in English. Um, and so they effectively used personalities. And so it was no surprise to me or to others when Viagra actually used former senator and presidential candidate Bob Dole to promote its products because people trusted celebrities to endorse products. But today, sadly, this generation in almost every case is being ignored by marketers. The perception is that they've made their brand choices and they're not going to change to any new products, which of course simply is not true. These are very educated people who have learned new skills like digital and social media. Now, this group is either living on Social Security or living on pensions or a combination of both. They actually have pensions. This was a generation that uh, had corporate pensions, which have kind of gone by the wayside. This is a generation that may have a significant amount of disposable income, but it is a group of the haves and the have-nots and not many in-betweens. So today, what are their concerns? Well, clearly, health care is the primary one plus the fear of running out of money and living beyond their savings. We know the reason Social Security works is because it was based on a pyramid-shaped society, a society where there were few retired people at the top and a whole lot of workers at the bottom to prop it up. The problem with our shaped society today is it's an hourglass. A lot of matures and baby boomers, very few Xers, and then back to millennials. And so it doesn't work uh, geometrically. Secondly, Social Security works really well when you start collecting at 65 and you die at 67. It doesn't work real well when you retire at 65 and live to be 99. And so they worry that maybe we're going to run out of Social Security money. Probably won't for their generation, but we're going to talk about that later for future generations. This generation also worries about being a burden to both their children and to their grandchildren. And they worry a lot about their children, their grandchildren, and in some cases, even their great-grandchildren. So are there still opportunities to market to this generation? Of course there are. Many do have disposable income. Prior to the coronavirus, they loved to travel, but they're now petrified to do so. They had driven the explosion of the cruise industry, but I'm not sure any of them are going to be getting back on cruise ships anytime soon. So safe living conditions, safe travel, safe shopping is paramount both now and in the near future to this generation. This generation also likes family and extended family experiences. We've taken a number of talc tours over the years. Talc is a company that has tour operator license number one, started back in the 1920s. Um, and they have a series of tours called the Bridges Tours. And these are tours of multi-generational families that travel together. Now, I've suggested to tout that they consider a whole new series that I called Seasons. These would be aimed specifically at older baby boomers and this entire mature generation. These would be tours with a slower pace, easy entry, maybe handicapped access, and very small groups for what may be the final trips of this generation. This generation remains a big, big target for charities, for universities, and for other institutions because they may leave behind donations that deliver a legacy for them. I want to make another point about the mature generation. This pandemic has impacted this generation more than any other, as we mentioned. If your property has a significant number of matures as your audience, then now more than ever, you need to make sure that they feel safe in your environment. 
We work both in country music and college sports. Our client, the Grand Ole Opry, attracts a whole lot of mature generation audiences and has taken every precaution to make sure these fans will feel safe when they reopen the Opry House. In fact, the largest, the largest Opry sponsor is actually Humana, who markets their Medicare supplement product to the mature audiences attending the Opry. And we have the same issue in college sports. We have a lot of very big boosters in this age group. And again, we'll need to make sure they are treated differently or they won't be coming back. A final word on this generation. There's a lot of wisdom in this group that can still be useful to you and me alike. I like spending time both reading what they've written and are writing and what they have to say in conversations. So that's the mature generation. Next time, we'll discuss my generation, the baby boomers. We'll see you then.